Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to talk about ink. Now, anyone who knows fountain pens knows that not all inks are created equal. I mean, all you have to do is look at some of the forum posts and you will see that some inks are universally loved, some inks are universally hated on, and some inks just sort of fall in the middle ground and are sort of pushed to the side and ignored. But one category that some people use to say some inks are better than others is the category of permanence or waterproofness. Sort of if you write something with a fountain pen and then spill water on it, will the writing bleed out and turn into a watercolour painting or will it actually survive and will the paper disintegrate first? Now obviously this is just one category which some people use to measure inks and it certainly isn't definitive in saying one ink is better than another. But for some people, waterproofness and permanence is something that is absolutely necessary. And this is where ISO 14145 Part 2 comes in. The International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, is an international standards group which works with organizations which test and certify products which make sure they confirm to a set out list of standards. Paper, for example, the whole A3, A4, A5 standard, which thankfully most of the world uses, is an ISO standard. There are many standards which the ISO actually has standards for, including more obscure things like the ISO standard International Cup of Tea. But let's not get distracted here. What we're here to talk about today is ISO standard 14145 part 2, and the standard details the requirements for inks to be able to be used for documentary purposes, and it sets out a bunch of tests from water to acid attacks, which the inks must pass in order to get certification. Now sadly, whilst there are a lot of inks on the market which claim to be permanent, bulletproof or waterproof, there actually aren't many inks on the market which are actually certified to adhere to the ISO uh, standards. And to be fair, I can understand why. First of all, not every ink claims to be or even wants to be bulletproof or waterproof. There are a lot of other qualities such as sheen or shading that some inks really excel at, though they're not waterproof at all. And secondly, whilst a lot of inks probably can meet these requirements, it does cost a lot of money to get your ink to be certified and to keep that certification, which is why if you want proper ISO certified ink, you're pretty much left with Mont Blanc's permanent uh, range of inks, so that's permanent black and permanent blue. And the other ISO ink that I could find was Diatrementus Document Ink. So today I thought I'd go ahead and test a whole bunch of inks and see how they stand up to being tested against the international standard for documentary use. Now first of all, the standards aren't available for free. This one standard here, this relatively niche standard, was $70 and it references about six or seven other standards within it which also aren't free. As well as that, the ISO are very strict about how you can share information within their standards. So whilst I will be testing the inks to the ISO standards, I will be quite brief about how I do it, just so I don't get pinged by the ISO and get an angry email. The standard calls for the ink to be written on pieces of test paper and then tested against how well the ink stands up to being erased, placed in water, light, hydrochloric acid, ammonium hydroxide, bleach, ethanol and water. And for this video I tested four of these against Mont Blanc's Permanent Black which I have, Noodler's Bulletproof Permanent Black which is an ink I have praised for many years because it is genuinely one of the best inks I've ever used and as well as that it is very very affordable and I also tested um, Raven Noir from Monteverde simply because I use this ink a lot. I'm very familiar with it and it makes no claims at all about being permanent or waterproof. Okay, so for the first test, erasing. Nothing difficult here. The permanent inks pass with flying colours, but the Raven Noir actually faded slightly. It's a slight change, but you can still see a little bit of a difference. Next into a tub of distilled water goes the test strips. 
This is probably the most common thing that a permanent ink will need to stand up against, rain and water spills, and almost instantly, the Raven Noir is bleeding out ink, whilst the other two are just as good as they went in. And at the two hour mark, when I pull them out, the Raven Noir actually didn't bleed out as badly as I thought, but in comparison, the Mont Blanc and the Nougla's ink look the same as when I put them in. The Raven Noir looks like a mess. Next up, a diluted mix of ethanol and water, and almost instantly, the non-waterproof ink is getting drawn out much faster than it was in the distilled water. Now, by the time we remove it, the Raven Noir has actually turned blue. Most of the color has leached out, whilst the other two are still perfectly crisp Everything is looking exactly the same as when I put it in. Let's bump it up a notch to something much, much stronger. This is high concentration bleach. This stuff is a very strong base and it's quite corrosive. Now the bleach instantly attacked the Raven Noir. The color quickly faded into a brown and after it was soaked for a while, it eventually faded almost entirely. The Mont Blanc, however, seemed to hold up just as well as the Noodler's ink. However, the second it was cleaned in distilled water, it sort of went downhill. The color actually started to leach out and turned into a bit of a mess. And by the time that it dried, it was all over the place, which is a real disappointment for the Mont Blanc ink. However, on the bright side, the non-certified Noodler's ink was going strong. It stood up to everything and it looked just as good as it did when we first put it in. Now finally, I was able to actually go ahead and track down some hydrochloric acid, but it wasn't in the concentration that was called for by the standard. However, I went ahead and tested it, and the results were a little bit strange. The bleed out in the Raven Noir was about the same as in the water. There wasn't that much of a color change, but it certainly did leach out a fair bit. Now, from the beginning, it looked like the Mont Blanc and the Noodler's ink were about tied, but once I did pull it out, it was clear that the Noodler's ink had faded ever so slightly, which for once put the Mont Blanc ink a little bit further ahead than the Noodler's ink. Well, uh, this ended a little bit differently to how I was expecting it. I think if I was ever on Mont Blanc's shortlist to getting free stuff, I think I am long off that list. But really, this was a bit of a disappointment for Mont Blanc. I, I, okay, okay, realistically, honestly, the worst that anyone has to worry about their inks getting trashed is via, I guess, alcohol getting spilt on it, or more realistically, water or rain getting on their work. And give it credit, the Mont Blanc ink was fine. Uh, it held up to both those tests just as good as the Noodler's ink. But the fact that the chlorine test uh, went ahead and totally trashed it, and in comparison, the Noodler's ink was fine, I think is quite disappointing. And the fact that it didn't hold up to the ISO standards is a little bit concerning. Maybe I did something wrong, but if I did it all correctly, I think it is a little bit concerning. Though, whilst it is a loss for Mont Blanc, I think it is a big win for Noodler's. I've been touting this ink for a long time. This is my second bottle. I, I've never had any issues with this ink. It's such a great ink, all rounder ink, never had any issues in any pen with it. And the fact that it beats the Mont Blanc ink, which is what, more than twice the price for it, that is a win for Noodlers. They really do make some amazing inks. And overall, Raven Noir, Look, I can't criticize it. It makes no claims at all about being waterproof. I've been using this ink every day for the past couple months. I know how it reacts to water. I wasn't expecting much from it. The fact that it was bleached out of um, the paper makes sense. I spilled it on my clothes before. I bleached it, so it really was what I was expecting. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.